In this nugget, we are going to discuss and demonstrate how we can manipulate the options of weights as well as persistence as they relate to load balancing. Let's begin. One of the really great things about a net scaler is that we can configure the load balancing on it seven ways to Sunday. For example, if we wanted to tell the net scaler that we wanted to load balance based on the current server in the server farm that had the least number of connections going to it, we could do so. If we wanted to do simple round robin, we could do so. And there's lots of other things we could base the load balancing on. We also have the option of telling the NetScaler to be persistent. For example, if Bob logs in with the source IP address of dot whatever, every time that source IP address comes in, let's go ahead and always base it on that source IP address. Another scenario may be that we may have three servers and they're not all exactly the same as far as horsepower. Maybe one is twice or three times faster than the others. What we could do is we could also set up weights. So in these services, and currently we have a service for red, which is server one, green, server two, and blue, server three, we could give them weighted values. By default, these services have a weight of one. But if we wanted to do something like this, maybe give this guy a weight of five, give blue a weight of five, and give the green a weight of three, then as the net scaler makes load balancing decisions, it would give more of the requests to the red and blue and less of the requests to green based on those weights. So as a couple of demonstrations, let's do this. Let's play with the weights of the three services that are currently in place, which represent HTTP services running on each of these servers respectively. And then after we configure and indeed verify that those weights are having an effect on how the NetScaler is doing its load balancing, then let's go in and set up persistence to have the NetScaler make a load balancing decision based on something such as the source IP address of the user, and as a result of the calculation that involves the source address, if the source address doesn't change, that same user should be going to the same server in the farm every single time. So let's start with our baseline here on the NetScaler. We'll go down to Traffic Management, go to Load Balancing, expand that, and Virtual Servers. And currently this is bound to three services. And if we open up the details of that server and click right here where it says we have three service bindings, it'll show us right over here that the weight by default is one. So equal weight for each of the three services. So from the user perspective, if we go back to Bob's machine for a moment, that should be equal load balancing across all three. So there's red, and there's green, and I'm just gonna throw it out there. I think the next one's going to be blue. And then it's just gonna repeat that process because we have it set up for round robin. So back at the NetScaler, let's go ahead and change the weights. So here are the default weights for each of them. So each of them have a default weight of one. Let's go in and tweak it. Let's go ahead and give red a weight of two and we'll give blue a weight of two and we'll leave green at one. And then as we do repeated requests to the virtual server, we should see most of the requests being answered by red and blue and an occasional request being answered by green. So let's make those changes first. So we'll double click on red. And what we're doing is we're modifying the weight regarding this binding between the virtual server and this service. So we'll give red a two from the virtual server perspective, and we'll give blue a weighting of two as well. And we'll click on bind. So over here in the right hand column, we have the two and the two and the one. So let's go test this out and verify to see if there's some bias towards red and blue, which there should be due to the weights that we've just set up. So let me go ahead and close this and click done there. And let's go back to Bob's computer. And I'm gonna keep track of the results here on paper because sometimes my mind is not the best statistician. My mind has a bias as well. So it may seem like blue is always coming up, but I wanna measure it. So there's blue, so that's one for blue. We'll close the browser, we'll launch it again. And there's red, so that's one for red. Fantastic, we'll launch it again. There's one for green. So, so far, <laughs> it's been an equal load balance across the three servers, but let's do a few more requests and see where the numbers take us. So that's blue, and that's red, and that's blue. Okay, that's a good sign, because what just happened is green has only been hit once, red's happened twice, and blue is three times. So let's do another request, and there's green, and let's go ahead and bring up another request. And it is blue again, wow. So blue is at four, red's at two, and green's at two. And I would be really happy <laughs> if the next one to come up was red, because red is due. And the crowd goes mild. 
So that's three for red, four for blue, two for green, and we could continue this game for quite a while. But the reality is that the bias is going to be on red and blue because they have a larger weight than green. Next, let's set up persistence so that once the load balancing decision has been made and we have a connection, that we can do persistence based on things such as cookies. Now, in our case, because we're loading Chrome with incognito mode, we're not keeping cookies between sessions. So that wouldn't work on our browser, but we could do persistence based on source IP of where we're coming from. The result should be that Bob, the user, should then continue to go to that single server, or at least as that server and its associated service and monitor indicate that that server is up and available. So back at the Netscaler, under traffic management, load balancing virtual servers, let's edit the details of our virtual server. Currently, it's showing us that we have three services that are bound. That's the red, blue, and green HTTP services with the slightly different weights based on what we just changed a few moments ago. And the load balancing method is based on round robin. Now, if we're looking at this screen and we don't see the method section, it might be tucked over here. So we could click on a plus symbol and that adds that to the left-hand side. For example, if we don't want to see the method here, we can click on the X and that pops it back to the right hand side. And if we wanted to bring it back over, we would click on the plus next to the method and that brings it back over. It's also assuming, by the way, that we want to edit it. So it went ahead and expanded it for editing purposes as well. So here's our load balancing method. We have based on least connection, least response time, destination IP hash, source IP hash, and that's for the load balancing method. However, there's another option called persistence, where we can specify that we want to persist once the load balancing decision has been initially made. So we'll go ahead and close the method section. And to see the persistence, we'd go ahead and select it over here off the right hand pane by clicking on the plus symbol next to persistence. That brings it over. And currently the persistence is set at none, which means we're going to rely just on the load balancing method to determine which server happens to get Bob's HTTP request. But if we wanted to, we could use the drop down arrow and we could base the persistence on the source IP or a cookie or an SSL session. And there's other options as well, but let's choose source IP for this demonstration and then we can specify a timeout. So let's give it a timeout of five minutes. So when Bob makes the connection, it's going to be directed to a specific server. And for the next five minutes, Bob's going to be sent to the same exact server. So with the source IP selected for persistence and we have a timeout of five minutes, let's scroll down and click on OK. We'll click on done and let's go test this out. So back on Bob's computer, we're going to go ahead and launch Chrome now. Whichever server we get spun off to for this HTTP request, that's the server we're going to have for the next five minutes based on the persistent setting that we just set up. So we'll launch Chrome and the lucky winner is blue. Great. So if we close the browser and we reopen it, I'm expecting blue every single time. In this nugget, we've discussed and demonstrated how we can tweak the load balancing, including the weights for the individual service, as well as options such as persistence that are parameters of our virtual servers and its related objects. I appreciate you joining me for this nugget. I had a lot of fun. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.